Welcome to Real World NP's Clinical Pearls, where we take gems from full-length episodes and break them into quick, digestible insights. I'm Liz Rohr, family nurse practitioner, and my pronouns are they, she. Real World NP is a continuing education company for nurse practitioners in primary care, especially new nurse practitioners navigating the role transition from RN to NP. Whether you're on your commute between patients or prepping for an exam, these bite-sized takeaways can help you build confidence in your practice. Let's dive in. So this week's episode, we're going to talk about microscopic hematuria. This is something that we see all the time in primary care. And what I'm going to do in this episode is really talk about like this high level approach of what to look out for, uh, approach to assessment diagnosis, and then just pearls of practice along the way. I'm, like I said, I'm going to keep this a bit high level, but there uh, are very much specifics of like what to do when and all the differentials included inside the lab interpretation course. It comes with a continuing education, about eight plus ish hours. We're in the middle of reaccreditation right now. Um, maybe some more hours, we'll see. But that all of that is at realworldnp.com slash labs. It is not the only lab interpretation course, of course. However, it is a support there if you're looking for it when it comes to dipstick, your analysis, all of the renal labs, like it's so good. But anyway, let's talk about microscopic hematuria. So I think first things first, what I wanna say is, um, what is he microscopic hematuria? So this is um, blood that's detected on a urine sample, typically by a dipstick. Like it's not visible to the eye, it's not like, oh, it's not overt blood in the urine. It's just, we did a dipstick and now we see a little bit of blood in there and we're like, let's, what's going on? We're trying to figure out why, right? So that's the definition. So it's either zero to three plus on a dipstick if we're talking about your analysis, which is the one that you send out to the lab and they spin it around and they let you know what's inside, that's about two to three red blood cells per high powered field is typically how it's reported. And there are kind of different organizations say it's two cells, two red blood cells per high powered field, some say it's three, etc. So if that's the definition, I wanna start with a couple of key points. Number one, Please don't ignore this. Uh, I don't have too many pet peeves in primary care, but that is absolutely one of them. Uh, and then the number two is that I just wanna remind you if you're not already familiar with this, or if you are as a reminder, that a dipstick is a beautiful, so helpful tool, and also it is a chemical reaction. And so what it's doing is reacting to the substances in the urine and then it's changing colors and then you interpret the color to correspond with like, oh, this dark purple color means that it's two to three red blood cells, right? Or two plus red blood cells. So just as a reminder or first time learning, when we have anything on a dipstick that we are not clinically managing in front of the patient in front of us, which hold that thought, I'll explain that more. We do wanna send it out for confirmatory testing with a urinalysis. So again, there's a bunch of caveats in there, but just generally speaking, if you have any doubts about what's in front of you, we do wanna confirm it, right? This is very patient dependent though, so I just wanna give that little disclaimer. So the next piece is we really wanna think about history before we get into diagnosis um, and management. So there's typically two presentations that I see of microscopic hematuria. One is that somebody came in with specific symptoms, right? So they had dysuria and, and, you're work, and I'm working them up for a UTI or something else, or maybe they have abdominal pain or flank pain, um, and I've gotten a urine sample to help put that clinical picture together. Um, however, there's a, a number of people that present that have no symptoms at all and they've just incidentally found this microscopic hematuria. So the next piece I wanna talk about is, is regarding, regarding the symptoms or not symptoms. So typically speaking, if you have hematuria, you're really, microscopic hematuria, again, not, not overt, we're talking about looking at the patient in front of you, why did you order it in the first place? Do they have abdominal pain? Do they have flank pain? Do they have dysuria? And you really do lead with hematuria is a clue for the clinical picture in front of you, right? You're really not leading with the hematuria is the quote unquote problem. It's like, oh no, we want to help the whole person. Let's lead with that first, right? But the next piece I want to talk about is those, those microscopic hematurias that are like incidentally found with no symptoms um, because those can feel a little frustrating for nurse practitioners. So what do you do when it's, a, they're asymptomatic and you just happen to find two plus blood on their, um, on their urine dipstick. So let's, like I said, let's start with history. So assuming they're asymptomatic, we wanna think about, like I love to think about this in a structural way. For the most part, when it comes to microscopic hematuria, as a little pearl here, is that it's typically either coming from a urologic source 
or from a kidney source, nephrology, right? And so that's the kind of piece of main main places that the differentials fall into. Is, like, is this a urologic cause or is this a kidney cause, nephrology, right? However, there's a couple of other etiologies we want to think about in broad categories. So medications, there's a handful of medications that can cause it. Um, we also have these things referred to as mimics. I call them mimics. I don't know if everybody else does, but they're kind of like the other sources of bleeding that is kind of tricking you to think that it's actually in the urine, but it's not. And typically this is coming from vaginal sources, um, perineum, uh, like maybe there's like a rash or lacerations or things like that, or rectal sources, right? Those are the kind of main buckets of categories you want to think about of like, where could this potentially be coming from? The next piece is like, what are the, what are the other other, of course, you want to do your physical assessment, right? GI, GU, um, other body systems, depending on the history of the patient. But in terms of the workup of the hematuria, the next thing you want to think about is like, what are the other labs showing us? And so the main first lab that you want to think about is the rest of the urinalysis, right? The rest of the urine dipstick and or urinalysis, if you're going to send it out. And typically, if you're not treating them on the spot for like a UTI or something like that, typically you're going to send it out for conf confirmation versus like if you had somebody who was menstruating who has a uterus and at that time they had their menstruation so like maybe you just want to repeat it next time right anyway like i said all the caveats and details are inside the course but i'm just trying to give like a very high level um, thing for this episode so yeah so you're going to look at the rest of the urine analysis and the urine dipstick right and the main key things you want to think about especially with hematuria is protein and white blood cells those are like the most next important things to look at right because like i said we're really trying to break it down is this a urologic source or is this a renal source and depending on what you're looking at renal sources tend to have more findings like white blood cells or um, protein or other findings in the urine and then typically again this is generalities typically speaking the urologic sources tend to have solely microscopic hematuria and they don't they tend not to have protein or white blood cells for example um, i do get a lot of questions about urine cytology and so urine cytology in the past was used um, to look at the cells of the urine to see if they were cancerous looking cells with persistent microscopic hematuria is no longer recommended because it's not sensitive or specific enough um, after that though, once you've kind of looked at those pieces, if you're leaning more towards a renal source based on the breakdown of your urinalysis, what are the other tests that you want to do? How do you work up renal problems, right? Um, typically you want to look at BUN, GFR, things like that. And then uh, versus are we leaning more towards a urologic source or are we leaning more towards another um, extra genital source, right? So in terms of getting into the specifics, I, I really want to keep it as high level as, as that. The next steps are really dependent on where you're kind of going with that. And then do you refer them to their specialist, nephrology, urology? Do you order any sort of testing before they get there? It really depends on the patient sitting in front of you. But hopefully this is a really helpful overview of microscopic hematuria, where to go. Um, just as a recap, uh, number one, we don't want to ignore it. Number two, we probably want to confirm it with a urinalysis send out however is really dependent on the person sitting in front of you whether or not they have symptoms or no symptoms typically no symptoms you're going to go on that further investigation of like do we need to repeat this because they have menstruation today um, versus their medication that could be causing it versus you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and then the next thing of course we want to think about in terms of history of identifying those big buckets of etiologies do they have symptoms do they have flank pain abdominal pain dysuria um, or no symptoms at all versus are we thinking about a kidney structure uh, a urologic source is it a vaginal source is it a perennial skin source is it a rectal source right and then we can kind of further break that down based on looking at the further urinalysis components of protein white blood cells um, other things, um, and then we decide who to refer to and what further workup steps we take depending on those pieces. So hopefully that is a helpful overview for microscopic hematuria. Like I said, inside the lab interpretation crash course, we really go through this step by step by step and talk about all the differentials and where to go and how to interpret those results. Um, but yeah, so that's available for you if you would like support with that. But hopefully this is a helpful episode uh, to get you going with microscopic hematuria enjoyed this clinical pearl, there's even more valuable insight in the full episode. Click the link in the description to hear the complete discussion packed with practical tips to strengthen your skills and confidence as a nurse practitioner. Don't miss it. And if you found this helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your fellow NPs so we can keep learning together.